More than a day after this explosion rocked this neighborhood and here behind me, this is our first up close look here on the Guerneville Bridge. This is one place officials are watching closely as the Russian River continues to rise. Most of this neighborhood was sleeping right around two o'clock when this SUV was swallowed by a sinkhole. Violently assaulted the speaker's husband, Paul Pelosi. This has created a massive police scene here in front of their residence. It doesn't look like much now, but 24 hours ago, this is where the water line was. Neighbors tell us it came up 55 inches. He's even had to install these extra security cameras to help protect his business. The most impacted airport here in the Bay Area once again. As you can tell from these hundreds of unclaimed bags just sitting, free snowballs included. Firefighters are inviting the entire community to come on out for a snow-themed block party. This is kind of the calm before the storm right now. The Chase Center is ready. The floor are mopped and that championship banner is ready to be hung here. Folks across the community of Felton have been running into similar damage like this all over town with massive trees blocking certain roadways. But just further down the road from where we are standing right now, we found several homes bearing the brunt of the damage as the San Lorenzo River took over. Perry D. Benedetto woke up to a muddy mess outside of his Felton home on Tuesday morning. For now, it's just a, a long day of cleanup for uh, you. Yeah, yeah, but I have help. The San Lorenzo River runs through his backyard off of River Road. And on Monday, the river hit its crest of 24.52 feet around 7.45 in the morning, the second highest mark in modern history dating back to 1937. It came in very quickly, you know, because, and it was in the middle of the early morning hour, around 3 30, 4 o'clock. So people that were here could not leave, even if they wanted to. He had a front row seat from the second story of his home to watch two swift water rescues of his neighbors while the rising water flooded out his garage below. I got Unreal. to watch what came down the river, and it, you know, it was. It was scary because there were 50 foot trees, just massive trees coming down the river <clears throat> from <clears throat> the burn scars from the, in Boulder Creek from the CCU, CCU lightning fire complex. It doesn't look like much now, but 24 hours ago, this is where the water line was. Neighbors tell us it came up 55 inches. Even the stuff that we thought was, was safe um, got got water damage. His street now lined with debris, down mailboxes, and plenty of lost garbage cans. He's grateful his living quarters were safe on the second story of his home, and also thankful to hear the historic covered bridge just down the road was saved. Now he's holding his breath that the worst of the flood damage might be over. Hopefully no more atmospheric rivers will, uh, will come through here because it will be uh, a real setback. Keep in mind, there are two evacuation centers open for this community right now. One is set up at the Santa Cruz County Fairgrounds over in Watsonville, and another is at the Cabrillo College in Aptos. Both are pet friendly and both have RV parking. Live in Felton, Lena Howland, ABC 7 News. Actually, Wednesday, August 17th is the deadline, the final deadline. I was told the deadline was August 17th based on the fact that there's no incumbent. Myself, as well as every other candidate for mayor, were told that the deadline to file our paperwork was going to be Wednesday, August 17th. Three Oakland mayoral hopefuls each given the same deadline to file their paperwork. But on August 12th, five days before that deadline, each candidate got a call from the Oakland City Clerk's Office saying the deadline had changed to five that evening. I was almost in tears because I knew I didn't have all my signatures. Manisha Carter says she had to leave her teaching job early to turn everything in. The following Monday, the clerk's office told her that her signatures were insufficient. I just feel like they should extend the, de the deadline, allow us to collect more signatures, or just put us on the ballot. Oakland native and civil rights attorney Elisa Victory was able to get everything turned in at the final hour. But I found out Tuesday morning after walking into the city clerk's office that there was an issue with my endorser's signatures according to them. They would not give me any chance to dispute it or to cure it 
if I agreed because they said the deadline was Friday. Derek, so a homeless advocate had been campaigning for years. I'm feeling it really slight, uh, especially for the three years of campaigning that I've done uh, to help Oakland to bring up the, the homeless issues and solutions. Even current City Council President Pro Tem and mayoral hopeful Shang Tao says she was given the wrong date but was able to correctly file in the nick of time. Still, she's advocating for her opponents. It's very frustrating. I understand that people make mistakes. You know, I do understand that. But in this case, you know, it's it's a it's a big mistake and we must rectify it. The Oakland City Clerk regrets the error, but says neither the city clerk nor any other city official has discretion to alter or waive state elections law, including authority to extend the filing deadline. That's why Elisa Victory is taking matters into her own hands, filing a complaint with the Secretary of State's office. I love this city and I do not feel that I'm being treated fairly. I don't think other candidates have been treated fairly. I'm running to correct some of these very issues that are preventing me from being on the ballot right now. In Oakland, Lena Howland, ABC 7 News. They say they will be back to normal with minimal disruptions by tomorrow. But faith in this airline isn't exactly running at an all-time high as travelers are still working to get reunited with their luggage still stuck in piles like these at airports all over the country. As some travelers are finally able to catch a flight home after the Southwest Airlines Christmas nightmare. Plans were pretty much ruined. I've been stuck here for three days. Uh, trying to find lodging, things of that nature, and finally I get to go home today. Others are frantically working to get reunited with their luggage. Oh, did you find your bag? I found it since December 24th. Oh my gosh, finally. And this woman wasn't alone. Jesse Swift was supposed to head home to Mountain House flying into the San Jose airport from Vegas on Monday, but his bag was already checked when his flight got canceled. No sign of the bag until he saw it live on ABC 7 from these hundreds of unclaimed bags just sitting, sitting in a pile of hundreds of other unclaimed bags, so we raced to the airport to get it. Then there was Kay Barklow out of Woodland. So we got to Las Vegas and everything shut down. Supposed to fly into San Jose from Hawaii, where their cars are earlier this week. Instead, they got rebooked on a flight to Vegas, where they've been stuck since Monday with no sign of their luggage. So no extra clothes, no medication, no makeup, right. nothing. Right, right. So fortunately, our doctor was able to call in a prescription to a pharmacy here in Vegas. So. That was good, but I certainly learned my lesson. We saw her personal bag tag sticking out on the corner of this pile of unclaimed bags with her phone number and address and decided to try calling. So at this point, before I called you, did you have any idea where your bag was? No, no. I was getting ready to fill out the form. And Southwest says it will be waiting for her as soon as she gets back tomorrow, despite flying into Sacramento first. I have a, a passenger on the phone, and her suitcase is in the corner. Uh, tell her to come get it. Tell her to come get it? Yeah, it's here. Come on down. Okay. All right. And Southwest says if you are still missing luggage right now, you can submit information on their website on how to receive it at no cost to you, meaning they will ship to any address for free. You are not obligated to go to another airport to pick it up. Live in San Jose, Lena Howland, ABC 7 News.